my name's Sarah. I'm from The Upcoming. It's a real pleasure to be able to speak to you today. Um, yeah. Maybe you could just kick off with a brief introduction to this incredible and original and, and funny new series, Nacho. What can people expect when they watch it? Precisely what you said. There's just uh, tons of fun. Yeah. I think that that was, the for me, that was the main, the main uh, goal here to deliver something entertaining. And I think the series is very dynamic. It has a, you know, um, a very good rhythm and it's just uh, it has the music and everything has a very involving ad, uh, atmosphere. And, uh, you know, I think people are going to are going to enjoy it. And of course, you know, taking on kind of the porn industry and this infamous porn star, it's not for the faint hearted um, and certainly mustn't have been in terms of taking on the role. So what was the appeal for you? And were you intimidated at all by the challenge? I was. I definitely was. I, when, when you know when when I got the call, I just I I couldn't understand why. Why would they think of me? Because I don't really look like the original Nacho. We don't give off the same vibe, or we don't give off the same energy at all. I thought, well, this is a really counterintuitive <laughs> casting choice. Why would they think of them? I think it's because they just ran out of actors. You know, everyone declined, so I was the <laughs> I was the only one out there still. But uh, no, it's interesting. The, the same producing company, a couple of years before, they produced a series about, um, I think, uh, the, the original title is Farinha. I think in England it's known as Cocaine Coast, which is very graphic. Um, but uh, so when we found out, I mean, me, we as actors in this country, that they were going to film that, we all started, we all called the, the producer, Teresa asking her to please, please let us audition for, you know, we wanted to audition for the for the series. And when the time came, we all wanted to be drug dealers. But when the time came to portray uh, a porn actor, no one picked up the phone, you know. <laughs> so <clears throat> no, this is interesting, you know, why people within the artistic world, uh, we presume or we tend to think that we are so progressive and liberal and and open-minded. Why, when it comes to sex, we all run away? No one's confident enough to jump on board, you know. So uh, I thought, okay, maybe, maybe there's something, something worth telling here. And what did the preparation look like? Because I guess, obviously, you're playing a real-life person, you know, and you kind of want to do justice to his persona and, and his story. Um, and then there must have also been a lot of preparation, you know, in terms of the physicality and, um, you know, whether that's, the, <laughs> you know, more intimate scenes, but also just the way he carries himself, um, you know, he's in the military, you know, a boxer. Um, so that must have required quite a lot of prep. As, as you said, there were so many fronts open, you know. Uh, first of all, the sex part okay the more the uh that was mental somehow that was a a, a a mental leap that i had to so that involved a lot of thinking just uh trying to pull down walls that i that i had built in my mind uh regarding sex and behind regarding exposure and and all that i think it was a very this is a different series from a different platform. But uh I, have you seen Girls by Lena Dunham? Do you know? Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so the way she's on camera, so careless about you know showing displaying her body and the, the, the way they portray nudity in that series was extremely appealing for me. So I after watching that, I thought, okay, so maybe because back then back in the days when I was doing you know, I was more in my 20s. Uh, when, whenever I had to take my top off, I would always, you know, talk to the director and try to convince him otherwise because, you know, I thought, well, this is not really necessary. It doesn't it doesn't contribute to for the scene to, to work better. It's, it's just, you know, it's, it's just a stunt. Why would... And now as soon as I get on set, I'm like, can, can I please take my top off, please? <laughs> so I think... It was, uh, yeah, as I said, just a mental leap. And, yeah, in the terms of taking care of my body uh, just or just making justice to how natural, you know, his physique, because he's a very physical guy, 
I just had to starve a lot. Just, just you know, just staying away from the catering and just, uh, just basically not drinking much water either, which is not very, very healthy. But um, yeah, it, it felt long. Uh, you know, to maintain that for twenty four weeks was a was a, was a, a bit of a, a challenge. But I, I felt I was on on a mission. You know, I, I just I had to, I had to portray this guy. And I had to, you know, I I was perfectly aware that throughout my acting life, my career, I'm not gonna, not many opportunities like this are gonna fall in, on my lap, you know. So I, I just, I, I was extremely committed to making the most out of it, and I wasn't gonna let anything like ruin the experience for me or get in the way of me and Natch, you know. And of course, even though it's kind of, I like the fact that it's got this very kind of entertaining, like darkly humorous tone to it, you know, it's quite irreverent. But of course, you know, it is dealing with some, you know, um, deeper issues, you know, how do we perceive the porn industry and those that participate in it? If we think of the, look at the figures of how many people consume it, there's kind of a, a contradiction in terms, the fact that people don't really talk about it or, do, or are very judgmental about it. And I guess, how did you want to kind of grapple with that and, and sort of make this distinction between sort of Nacio, the guy, and, and Nacho, the, the performer, because there's different sides to him. Of course, there's this kind of toxic masculinity that I guess was more prevalent back in the 90s as well. But, you know, he's this real human being and you want to show that that, that other side of him too. Definitely. I, I mean, the pain is real. And the experiences that are, these are real human beings. And although we we tend to to think of them as very different people to us because of their, their 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 trade or the way they earn a living. They go through very you know the same same issues we all we all go through. So that human side, that human element of the story for me was was really really important to 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 nail. Uh, but also using as you said, uh, humor as a lubricant. You know, I, I thought if we get people to really uh empathize with the character and be sympathetic or empathize with the characters is going to be through the humor and, and i i tried to push it as much as i could i i i, I had that in the back of my mind constantly i like, try to find the humor on things you know and yeah th those those were the challenges you know uh one of the for me was very uh as a reference lock and stock into smoking barrels and snatch i thought that because the tone for me to find the right tone to tell this story was the hardest part i mean uh, you know faking orgasms and be exposed and all that that wasn't it wasn't easy that wasn't a walk on the park but the the, the main challenge here was finding the right tone and i thought that the, those movies those first movies by guy Ritchie, they they really have the the, the 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 frequency that we thought we we had to you know the 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 wave that we had to ride that, that so we would just try to replicate that type of atmosphere and energy because the roles that you know the characters are bigger than life and they're very extravagant but at the same time they're rooted in reality and you relate to them and and it feels like yeah so that we we had as Nacho does with his own persona, you know, managing to put together Nacho, Vidal, and Ignacio Jorda. It's just like uh, one animal with two heads, you know, two different heads. We had to somehow be able to jump from the drama to the humor to to the humor to the drama and make that, you know, uh, so that people wouldn't perceive it as a bumpy road, but just have a, a, a flow to it, you know, the, the way they, they, they interconnect. And it looks like you must have just had so much fun making the series. Like you said, so many challenges along the way, but like just the high pace of it, the, the production values, you know, the partying scenes, um, you know, did you have like a favorite moment or when you watch it back now, a real favorite moment from the series? It felt like a lifetime, just condensed in 24 weeks that's that's i i really felt i was i went in a one of those adventures that changed your life you know it was it was a quest um we had so many man but, but especially there was there's a boat you don't really perceive it on camera uh or on screen sorry but uh that party on that boat in ibiza i felt like 
I felt like I was a uh, captain a cap in in Moby Dick, you know, because that there was like it wasn't a storm, but the 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 sea was the waves were huge, and I was uh, at some point uh, every like the whole crew was puking. Uh, I felt I was acting inside a washing machine. It, that that day was 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 nuts, but but most of the days were nuts. Look, I, and that's that's one of the things that. Uh, Sorry, I forgot to mention this in previous interviews today. I'm still, I'm a bit rusty. But, so, I, I'm a very cerebral guy. I always like to know what to expect. Nacho is the opposite. He's, you know, he plays things by ear. He just goes with the flow. He's uh, open to whatever comes. So I thought, okay, I have to really put myself in that state of mind to, 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 to be part of this series. And filming this wasn't easy because we got canceled so many times throughout the filming. Like we would have a location and two days prior, three days prior, they would cancel it. Because as soon as a lot of people found out, I'm talking about neighbors, establishments, companies, uh, just uh, boroughs. As soon as the cities, they find out that this series was about Nacho, they wouldn't be, they wouldn't want to be part of it. And I thought, if we were filming uh, a biopic about Jack the Ripper in London, I'm sure it we would have we would have had a, an easier time than filming Nacho, you know, which I thought, this is crazy. This guy, he hasn't, he hasn't, he hasn't been in prison yet, so it can't be that bad, you know, to somehow cross him like that. So it was it was a challenge. The whole the whole experience the, from the beginning to end, and, and still is. You know, it was it was something really intense. It was very. It felt it felt like an adventure, like a war. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've never had the feeling before with a uh, with the filming of anything that I've been part of. This was extremely extremely a uh, particular interesting experience. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Well, I can't wait for everyone to have the chance to see it. And thank you so much for sharing all that with us.